I did a poll on Instagram asking people if they wanted to follow me through the month of the NICU, you know, week by week, and overwhelmingly people said yes. So asking you shall receive. Welcome to my last first week in the medical ICU. Yes, this is my last medical ICU rotation. Well, scheduled anyway, ever. Once this is done, never to rotate in the MICU as a resident again. I am very excited. Well, I'm excited for it to be over and I'm excited to start. But today is day one. These rotations are 28 days long. I will have probably four, maybe five days off among those 28 days. So really 24 probably, but maybe 23 days actually of working over the next 28. Today, I am getting my first call day out of the way. So I purposely chose call one so my call days would finish. Now, what does that mean? First of all, let's talk about how a MICU is organized. In our medical ICU, there are 28 beds, two attending teams and four resident teams. For each attending, there is one fellow. For each attending and fellow combination, there are two resident teams. Each resident team is comprised by a senior resident and an intern. So that makes for our 28 bed medical ICU, there are two attendings, two fellows, four senior residents and four interns. So how does that circle back to call one? Well, we're on a four day call rotation. So today I'm on call, tomorrow I'm after call, so we call it post call. Then we have something called short call. And then the fourth day I'm pre-call, which means to the day after that is, you guessed it, call. So what is actually, what does that mean? What does call mean? At seven o'clock in the morning, the call team, me, takes the admitting pager and admits patients until eight o'clock in the evening. We'll go through that rotation seven times and then we'll be done. So I did just come off a of vacation and that means I got a little extra juice in the tank, a little extra rested, not a lot, but a little. It's hard to uh, make up three lost years of sleep in two weeks. <sighs> but I meal prepped last night, weighed everything out. I'm really kind of getting back on that kick during this month in the ICU. When we're in the ICU, we're actually not allowed to leave the unit when you're on call because if something goes down, there have to be doctors there and that would be us. So instead of eating the grilled cheese cardboard hybrid they offer to us or just a various assortment of things that are probably bad for you and certainly taste terrible, I decided to bring in my own stuff. Which reminds me, I think I forgot a fork. I also woke up a little bit early this morning so I could manage to get 20 minutes on the exercise bike. Got a good sweat going. Again, I'm not gonna get home until 9.30 p.m. at the absolute earliest, and I have to be up again at five tomorrow morning anyway. So I'm not gonna cut into my potential sleep time to go to the gym at 9.30, go to bed at midnight, wake up back again at five. That's just not how things work for me. That's kind of the basic overview. Over the course of the next week, you'll start to see me get worn down. So be excited for that. All right, day one, let's go. Oh, what a week. I um, I didn't get a chance to record much because I forgot how quickly the ICU catches up to you. I just worked seven days in a row. I'm grateful that I have 21 days of this rotation and four of those will be off days. But yeah, seven days in a row. Uh, first day was a call day. Not a bad call day, I think it was 15 hours. Second day post call, about average for a post call day, I think that was 11 hours. And that was Thursday. Friday was short call. Didn't get any new patients because we were capped and that was about 10 hours. Um, Saturday was pre-call. I gave my intern the day off and I worked. But I left super early, I think I left two, so that makes it seven hours. And then Sunday call, uh, a little bit later, I think 16 hours. And then Monday post call, I had morning clinic though, so it was a little bit hectic. Um, that was 11 hours. And then today, not so bad, I think 10. So 15, 11 is 25, and then 10 is 35. Seven, 42, and then 16, 58. 11, 11, 69, and then 10, 
79. So <laughs> in the hard max 80 hour work week, I just barely slipped underneath. <laughs> oh, well played universe. Well played. You know, I got back into it really. The last time I was in the medical ICU, it was all COVID. And there was one pathology and it was COVID. And that was very early in our understanding of the disease. And we knew very, very little about it. The last time I was in the medical ICU, when it was a medical ICU, was my very first rotation in July of 2018. As of this recording, it's mid-February 2021. So it took me a little bit to get back into it, but I think I'm back into it. I think I feel how the workflow goes. I think I feel how, you know, the day goes, my responsibilities as a senior, my intern's responsibility as an intern, how we can both help each other, my job being at bedside more than not. You know, you quickly forget just how much you walk throughout the hospital. And for us, it's just the one unit. And we really don't leave that unit, especially when we're on call, you know, there needs to be a a senior resident there at all times to run the show. I was lucky enough to have some patients that I could talk to that I saw get better. Had a couple of patients who are stably sick and none of my patients passed, but there was a few that passed this week. And you know, those discussions with families are never easy. I think the patients that passed this week, the family knew it was coming, so it was a little bit easier, but still not easy by any stretch of the imagination. What's funny is sometimes during call days or post-call days, we get patients from overnight. And one time, one morning, we got two patients that were almost identical with identical problems. They had the same medical problems chronically. They were right next to the same age. They were both super, super sweet patients, same disposition, um, came in with the same issue and had the same procedures and were in rooms right next to each other. Um, that was something that I'd never experienced, frankly. They both did wonderfully. They're both out of the hospital. They're both doing fine, uh, but not something that you, you see a lot. Just the two almost perfectly identical patients sitting right next to each other. With our medical ICU these days, it's a little peculiar because there's so much more by way of travel nursing. Now, a lot of the nurses in the medical ICU I've known since I was an intern, so it's been like two and a half years. And when I'm on consult rotations, I often rotate on their patients and they've gotten to know me very well and they've gotten to trust me and I them. There are a handful of nurses who don't know who I am, have never worked with me before, and I have to earn their trust with my care and my discussions with them and our communication skills. and. Know, how well I do just as a physician. And it goes far beyond just knowing the medical literature and understanding the disease process. It goes to communicating with the staff, communicating with the families, communicating with everybody else. And, you know, that's one of the harder parts of the job is to have somebody else who's on the care team trust you implicitly. And that comes with lots of time and lots of experience. And, you know, it's a nice challenge to have because it kind of takes out the sick and dying part of medicine and transitions to how do I communicate with members of the patient care team so that this sick and dying patient is properly cared for so we can do right by the patient. It's an interesting part of the ICU dynamic that you don't learn in medical school and you don't really hear about. And you know, there are so many meme pages or you see all over television, some of the relationships between physicians, residents, attendings, whomever, and nursing staff, and you know the radiology techs, and the phlebotomists, and I will say that in my experience, everything that I've seen that's not in the hospital has been woefully incorrect. But that being said, I think every meme probably has some truth somewhere, but you know, I haven't found it. So for those of you who are trying to become doctors, or nurses, or whatever it is you're trying to become, Maintain your open lines of communication. That's the most important thing you can do as a healthcare provider. My fitness has kind of taken a back seat through these first seven days. Now, of course, I don't really exercise much when I'm on call, you know, because it's hard to get to the gym. You know, I got to be out of the house early and the gym opens like 20 minutes before I have to leave. The gym closes 
immediately as I get home. Um, so they're long days and the gym isn't open, so I can't get there. I try to ride the bike as much as I can before work. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes I need that extra half an hour to sleep to function appropriately. 30 minutes that otherwise would have been spent on the bike. I think I lifted twice this past seven days. And I rode the bike, uh, I wanna say three times. So, you know, not bad. I'll take it for an ICU month. But I know I need to focus on doing better next week. We did actually just get a treadmill. So I spent some time trying to put that up, which is why I went to bed really late one of the nights. But that's besides the point. I will say that I'm not terribly displeased with my diet. Um, I've spent a lot of my time when I'm awake and at home meal prepping, and I've been very happy with how I've been doing, and I hope to keep that up. There's been a couple times where I've slipped, but you know, it's not a daily thing. It's, you know, a couple times a week. So I understand that, and I've noticed that. And, and frankly, I'm pretty proud of where I've come from. and with regards to cheating and snacking and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'm happy I made progress on that front. But again, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to do better. So I will take that focus and move it on to this coming week. And also I'll try to record more during the day and in between the week, because I think I only got a chance to record like two or three times this whole week. And how could you blame me? Because I was getting used to the NICU, but I'll do better next time. So there's a lot of things I can do better on <laughs> this second week. But that being said, it seems like really an average medical ICU week. But like I said, I have 21 days left. Four of them will be off days, including tomorrow. So I don't plan on recording a damn thing tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be largely trying to put this video together and spending time with Kyrie and the dogs. You know, Kyrie had five nights in a row while I was working seven in a row. So there were a few days we just didn't see each other at all. Um, one of those days was Valentine's Day. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting next three weeks, but I promise I will get better at recording. But for now, again, I have no idea what time it is. I just know it's time for me to go to bed. So that's what I'm gonna do. See you guys next week.